What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So big announcement for Smash Bros. We now know when Terry is gonna be shown and to be honest, probably released that same time. We'll go over that as well as What's really funny, it, it's this rumored leak that's going around that seems to have a lot of people convinced and it's starting to kind of line up with what we've now had announced. So we'll talk a little bit about that part for entertainment, but we'll go over what's happening tomorrow for Smash Bros. Also, yes, Hideo Kojima is, uh, he's, got, he's got some plans going forward after Death Stranding, it seems, and I don't think it's really gonna surprise anyone, but we kind of know now what, what his next step is gonna be and really where he's gonna be heading with his career path. As always, guys, enjoy these videos. Make sure to like button, it does help out, and get subscribed so you can stay updated on all the gaming news going on in the gaming world. And we're gonna start today with Playtonic. They are, of course, creating different things like Ukulele. They just did the Impossible Air, which is like the side-scrolling overworld-style game. They did Ukulele, which is very similar to Banjo-Kazooie from the, the 90s, and and now it looks like they are continuing to add to their staff and that now includes someone who was with them for the Banjo-Kazooie series. This is actually the designer of Mumbo Jumbo. Do you remember Mumbo Jumbo back then in Banjo-Kazooie where he would turn you into all kinds of different stuff? It was it was pretty funny, but it was always fun to find him in the games because you never knew what you would be turned into to complete a puzzle. But yes, Ed Bryan has been hired now by uh, Platonic Games in order to, I assume, make, I, I guess, another game like Ukulele. You know what I've thought about Platonic for a while is, wouldn't it be really funny if Microsoft decided to come to them and say, hey, we have Banjo-Kazooie, you guys know Banjo-Kazooie, why don't we make something work here and you guys make the next game in the series? That would be kind of neat. I, I think that's something that people would really get behind. Yes, Ukulele was basically a Banjo-Kazooie, but it doesn't have the same character obviously, and that would have, I think, affected it in some fans' minds, but you never know. Otherwise, though, I'm sure they're working on the next game as it seems like Impossible Lair did pretty well. Next up, let's talk about the possibility of Beat Saber on the Switch, and there, there's some interesting stuff there that could happen. Now, on Twitter, Beat Saber did tweet this out, kind of teasing a November 7th reveal, and below that, a user actually asked them about it coming to the Switch, and they said, we are definitely having something like this in mind for the future, okay. Yeah, so Beat Saber is a VR rhythm based style game. You've probably seen people play it, especially recently on like the Oculus Quest. But could you imagine Beat Saber on the Switch? It already has Joy Con controllers that would work for the, the entire idea of the game. And I guess you would use something like Labo to make it work. That would, that would be interesting. The Labo VR would be neat to see some other developers take a shot at it, even moving some VR games over to use it. But Beat Saber, That'd be really cool to see come over. And again, the Joy-Cons are already set up for it. Now, this is not them necessarily confirming it, but they, they're certainly leaning into it. I'm not sure what they're gonna be announcing on the 7th, and I have a feeling it's not anything with the Switch, uh, but it's still something to keep in mind, I would say, going forward. Oh, and this is a, an interesting bit of news. This popped up, and let's say you like building models, right? but would you like to build models of old retro systems like the PlayStation and the Saturn? Because it seems like Bandai Spirits is going to be trying that. Yeah, they're gonna be selling model kits that are coming out March, 2020. They do have it currently up for pre-order in Japan, and I'm sure you could probably get them imported as well for about $20, so it's not too bad. And what's really cool is here's some pictures of it. It seems like even the inner innards of those systems are kind of rendered out and you could see them and kind of put them together, piece them together. And they're already set up on the outside to look like the systems. They're a little smaller, okay? So they're uh, two fifth scale. So yeah, they're, they're a bit smaller than what, uh, what you're used to with the actual system, but this is, an idea I would have not thought of. This this is this is different, right? To have models of those systems. I guess you can have fun putting them together. Apparently it even comes like a little disc you can put in it that's doesn't actually do anything. Like th these don't really work. It's more or less just for show, but I, I guess if you have like a game room or you want to display it, you can spend time building it and making it look all nice and then you can put it up on your shelf and while it's not one that you're going to do much with outside of look at it, it's, I guess it'd be good decoration and a lot of people like putting models together, so it's kind of a neat idea, I would say overall. I'm not sure if it'll ever really make a release outside of Japan, but keep an eye on it. All right, guys, quick news out of the way, let's get in the bigger stuff. Let, let's start with Smash Bros right away. If you were wondering when Terry would come out, whether or not because you want to play as Terry or you want to possibly move on to what the next character will be, which is something I saw some people excited about, thinking that, oh, once Terry's released, we can look forward to the reveal of the next character. But 
I do think Terry's gonna be pretty cool in Smash, and it looks like we're gonna be finding out more about this tomorrow, as you're seeing this tweet here from Nintendo Versus saying, join Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Director Masahiro Sakurai on uh, November 6th at 5 a.m. Pacific time for a roughly 45 minute video live stream featuring an in-depth look at the upcoming DLC fighter, Terry Bogard, from the Fatal Fury series. Uh, they also go on further to say a new version 6.0 of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will arrive soon. This update will include fighter adjustments, meaning replay data from previous versions will be incompatible. So I guess they'll do some balancing for different characters. And you might be thinking, 45 minutes, that's, that is a while. And yeah, that, that is that is a long time. I think the Banjo, uh, the, the kind of live stream they did for Banjo was, I think that was like 25 to 30 minutes. So this does feel like a pretty lengthy live stream just for Terry. It, it really does seem kind of out there for that. Now, here's the thing. It's also at 5 a.m. Pacific times. So they really are testing how willing people are to wake up to watch this. 5 a.m. Pacific time is pretty early. Of course, that's 8 a.m. Eastern, but 5 a.m. Pacific specifically is one that people are gonna look at and say, wow, okay, I have to wake up before five just to get ready to see Terry shown off for 45 minutes. I think some people will just wait to watch this as you can see on a replay. The question will be, is Terry being released like right away? Are they gonna come on live stream here? They're gonna show it and then say, oh, he's available now. Or will they just say he's available later today or later this week or something like that? And then of course the other question is, are there any big announcements set up for this live stream as people are now wondering, oh, maybe it's that long because they'll announce someone else. Well, that same Twitter account Nintendo Versus decided to shoot down that thought saying, during this live stream, there are no announcements regarding any unrevealed fighters. So yeah, I pretty much took that out right away. There are a couple that are currently, uh, currently rumored right now. And the big one seems to be either Ryo Hayabusa or, uh, or they have Doom Guy. Those are like the two that are just rumored out there. I think most people have heard of those by now. But on top of this, there have been some, so whenever these dates happen, people always go back and start searching to see if there are any rumors or leaks or stuff put up on all kinds of places, whether it's 4chan's or other forums, uh, just to see if they got the date right. And, yeah, one did, and it is it is an odd, an odd, odd leak slash rumor because it talks about Terry being shown and released on the 6th of November, which is correct, but then it also goes on to talk about things like Frogger, okay, Hayachi, I guess, uh, and then of course you see Doom references and Gino and others. It is kind of all over the place when it comes to that. Almost reads like something uh, a fam would list and say, oh, this would be really cool if all this happened at once. But then we get a video that starts making the rounds showing different me character outfits that have at least uh, definitely a look towards Doom and uh, possibly Geno as we see Mallow and then of course enemy from Doom kind of hanging out there. Now here's the thing about this. They say no unreleased fighter or, or fighter that has not been revealed yet, but they don't say anything about outfits or me costumes or anything like that. That's something you could see here. 45 minutes does seem like a while for Terry, and there's a chance that they talk about, you know, the stage, uh, the, the soundtracks possibly that's added, uh, and, a, and a couple of other things, but I think modes could be introduced here, and I do think you could see some different outfits also added onto uh, that you can buy. And yeah, I mean, it could be Mallow, it could be characters from Doom. There's a lot of stuff that could just be thrown in there. I mean, we saw Sans from Undertale. At this point, who knows what it could be. Either way though, if, if you wanna, I guess, get up 5 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, you can do that. Otherwise, I'll cover it here, or you can of course check the, uh, I, I guess, the, the playback after it does take place. Here's hoping that Terry gets released that day though. Next up, let's talk about a possible PlayStation 5 release game. So a game that could come out at launch with the PlayStation 5. It's one that's been speculated quite a bit, but never actually pointed out by Guerrilla Games until possibly now. There are several job listings, I'm talking about like 15 job listings that went up, and one of them seems to point to a new Horizon Zero Dawn. Are you surprised to hear that there would be a Horizon Zero Dawn 2? I don't think anyone's really surprised because the first one sold well, it was critically acclaimed, and people really enjoyed it, but this job listing here 
does seem to go over the idea of another Horizon Zero Dawn, saying, the creation of vegetation assets that are used to dress the game world, and the listing explains that within Guerrilla, we have four teams dedicated to creating the stunning environments of Horizon, and one team focuses on the creation of lush and stunning vegetation. So they are referencing another Horizon game, and yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 would make a ton of sense coming out alongside with the PS5. In fact, I think Horizon Zero Dawn 2 would make a ton of sense to showcase the PlayStation 5 at their event. They could also just use Last of Us Part 2, but if you look at what they're trying to do with the PS5 and what they've been explained that they're trying to do with the SSD and the better CPU, they might want to take a game that's open world, like the, the big open world style game, like a Horizon Zero Dawn, and show it off there. They might not want to show Spider-Man, which they did with investors, and they showed the load times and how fast it can speed through the city. They might want to show something that they can really zoom out on and just show off this big landscape. And I think not only could they uh, announce the PS5 and show it heavily, they could also announce Horizon Zero Dawn 2 alongside that, have that as kind of their tech demo game, and then say, yeah, it's coming alongside the PS5, that is one of our launch titles. That would be big for them. I think there'd be a lot of people really excited for that. And of course, as long as it's backwards with the backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4, they shouldn't run into kind of the, the launch issues that they had with the PlayStation 4, since that didn't play PS3 games. But if you have full backwards compatibility with PS4 games, and you have something like a Horizon Zero Dawn 2 there, I think you'll at least get off and running during the holidays pretty easily. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Hideo Kojima and his plans going forward for his new studio. Now, of course, while he was making Death Stranding, he also was building up a studio that he just started. It, it was It's a very interesting story, and there was a really cool documentary that was done by the BBC, and it talks a lot about his plans going forward as well from here. If you didn't notice in Death Stranding, there are a lot of actors and actresses in there that you would see in Hollywood. And it's been long, I mean, long speculated that Kojima was going to look to really get into the film industry. Well, in this documentary, he talks about just that saying, in the future, Kojima Productions will also start making films. If a person can do one thing well, then they should be able to do anything well. And here's the thing, we have the BBC documentary that's really pointing all of this out. and. Is anyone really surprised that Kojima wants to do film? No, I mean, the biggest running joke about his games is they, they almost are films. I mean, there is an entire thing right now talking about Death Stranding having a very lengthy cutscene that you do kind of interact with, but it's mostly a movie almost of two hours towards the end of the game. If you've played Metal Gear Solid 4, Yes, those are very long cutscenes that take place that are basically mini movies sprinkled throughout the game. And I'm not surprised to hear this. Here's the thing though, if he gets into film, my question is, can he take his vision and his ideas and shrink them down to like two to three hours at a time on the big screen? Doesn't necessarily have to mean that he can't make a trilogy, right? Or something or, or something where it's a, a set of movies, but can he get chunks of his vision on the big screen so that it all does at least come together somewhat by the end and you're not leaving confused? Because that's the biggest thing now is even with Death Stranding, people still don't necessarily understand everything that's going on after they've reviewed the game. So that's the thing. And that is like a 40 to 45 hour game for some people. Can you, can you get that down to two to three hours when even some of the cutscenes are like two hours? Uh, the, that is the question there. But hey, I'll at least be interested to see him try to break into the film industry because I think that's what he really has wanted to do. It's just, he's always done video games and he kind of merged his love of movies with games. And I think it has done some, some pretty good stuff for the industry, right? I think a lot of people recognize that, but you start seeing Death Stranding and you start to see that it's less and less about the gameplay and more about, I guess, the narrative. And then you start to wonder, is he just completely leaning into movies now? It looks like that might be the case. And we'll finish up with a comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from uh, Eniestra saying, always online equals no buy. Diablo was a lot of fun single player too, or local co-op like we need another <laughs> full on online game, let alone always online. Oh well, makes it easy to skip. I, I've seen some different opinions on this after that news broke. It seems that some people are saying, okay, you know, it's always online. That means don't worry about cheaters or anything. But on the other hand, you're right, if, you, if you're not connected to the internet, you can't 
play it. So let's say your internet goes down, what do you do? Well, I guess you're just not playing Diablo 4 that night. Uh, that's, that is a real thing that people see. And if they, I, I don't even know how they would ever be able to consider bringing it to the Switch easily because that knocks out like half of the idea of the Switch, which is that you could take it on the go away from the internet. Now we've seen some MMOs, right? We, we just talked about DC Universe pretty recently. There's Warframe that are always online connected games. And some people don't even take their Switch outside of their house. So if you're used to that, then you'd probably be fine with Diablo 4 at that point. But the other thought here is if it's always online, is there even a point really for a lot of us to buy it physically at all? Because then you're just putting the disc in, it's gonna install the drive, and then it really, one, it doesn't do much there, but two, it's, I mean, it's an always online game, just release it digitally since you have to be connected to the internet at all times to use it anyway. But uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying there, but I have seen some people happy with the always online. Me, uh, I like the idea of there being at least an option for offline single player mode or even local co-op, uh, but interesting there. Well, we need to see more about Diablo 4 still. That and Overwatch 2 really don't have as much information out there as I'd like, and we're still even waiting for release dates or even years. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is the Smash event happening tomorrow morning with Terry Bogard. No new characters, but could there be me fighters or outfits or any modes that could be revealed there? Could be interesting to see that. Also, what about Kojima doing movies? I, I mean, I, I, I feel like no one's really surprised, but I mean, hey, maybe someone thought they were gonna be, he's gonna be sticking with nothing but games. And then also, what do you think about Horizon Zero Dawn 2 as a PS5 release game? I think that would make a lot of sense. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.